In this video, let's go through step-by-step step how to make this interactive radio button component within Figma. And as a bonus step, let's go through how to create this interactive group of radio buttons within Figma as well. So now in Figma, press the O on your keyboard and click on the screen to draw your circle. Now come over to layout and select lock aspect ratio. And now let's change this number either in the width or the height down to eight pixels. Zoom in a little bit. So we're gonna build out this radio button in three stages. We'll build out the item itself and then we'll build out the radio button within the word. And then I'll show you how to build out a group of radio buttons that can be used within prototypes to feel interactive. So the first stage is building out the individual radio button item. Now with your circle, I like to label everything so it's easier as you scale things out. Let's make it inner radio. Now select your circle and select Shift A on your keyboard to make auto layout. Now we're gonna make this radio item. Now come over here and remove all of the padding within it, but let's set a fixed width and height for it. Let's make this 16 pixels by 16 pixels. Also with the auto layout, make sure you come over here and you select for it to be a line center. Now down on the appearance, round your corner radius. So put in 999, so it's all the way rounded. With your radio item still selected, add a stroke to it. And we're gonna kind of build out the radio button backwards. So we'll make the selected state first, and then we'll move backwards within the component to make the default and the hover state. Now within your radio item, we wanna change both the stroke as well as the inner radio circle to be the same blue. So I'm just pasting in a color. You can make this whatever color you want to be your selected state. So now we have the basis of our radio button set up. Might actually just make this inner radio a little bit bigger. It looks a little bit funny being eight pixels. Maybe 12 would be better. Now with our radio item set up, come up to the top right and select create component. Now when we've created a component, let's add a property and we'll add the different variant states to it. So we want to rename this state and let's add two variants. So this last one with that selected, let's make this our selected state. With our middle one, we're going to make this our hover state. So to make our hover state, let's come in here and select the inner radio and let's hide this. So press the eye icon here so it hides. So this will be our hover state and then let's like make this our default state. So we'll go into our inner radio and we'll hide this as well. And then on our stroke on this layer, let's change this to more of a default sort of gray color. So let's bring it down over here for a default gray. Now this is our radio item. This is the smallest part of the component. And now from here, let's make the next layer. Right click and make a copy. And then over here on the side, paste here. So this is just a copy of our component. Make sure you don't drag the original component out. You're just making a copy from the master component here. Now to make our radio button, let's click T on our keyboard and type out our word. Let's write select. Let's select both of them and click Shift A to apply auto layout. Let's make the alignment of it align left and let's make it an eight pixel gap. Now let's name this radio button. So from here, we're gonna follow the same process with our radio button. We're gonna come up to the top right and select create component. We're gonna add our variant property and we'll make it the same as before. So this will be state and we wanna add two variants. So the first one will be the default and all you have to do is match it to the one on the left here. So default, second one down will be our hover state and because we're doing nested components, it's really easy to make this consistent and scale this out. So click into here. So you have your radio item component selected now. Change it from default to hover. And then the last one, same thing again, make this a selected state. Click into here and change this state all the way to selected. So now we have our default, our hover, and our selected state. Now we have our two layers of interactive components. Now let's go through and prototype this. So within our radio button here, let's come up to the top right and click prototype. 
and let's hover until you see this little blue plus and we'll drag an interactive noodle from selected to the hover. Let's change the interaction from on click to while hovering, change to the hover state and let's make it smart animate 350 milliseconds. Now select your second, your hover state, and drag it down to the selected and make this interaction on click, change to selected, and it's already set up. Smart animate, ease out 350. And now the last one to close the loop, let's select this one, make sure you select where the little plus icon is and drag it down, back down to your default. So now this is one version, but I think actually more useful within testing a radio button is normally having it in a group of radio buttons. So the last level I'll show you is how to set up an interactive group of radio buttons. I think this is really helpful when you're prototyping something to be able to really showcase the intended interaction and how that UX pattern normally works. We're gonna select our default, copy, come over to the side and click paste here. So now from here, let's make a copy of this one, copy, and paste here. Now that we have two, let's select both of them, select Shift A to apply auto layout. Let's make the gap between it 12 pixels. Now let's name this group radio button just to keep it consistent. And now the shortcut to make copy and paste is Command C, Command V. So it's the same as right click and selecting copy and right clicking and selecting paste, but within Figma, the shortcuts make you so much faster. So again, Command C, Command V, and now we have a group of four radio buttons. Now let's select create component and let's add some properties. So we're gonna add a variant property, which is gonna be the type. Now we need to make a few variants here. So we're gonna add five in total. Three, four, five. And now within them, I'm just gonna set up this grid so you can work out which one I'm talking about and which component is which. So now with the grid set up, just so that I can explain it better as I talk you through how to set up the prototype here. So we're gonna have our unselected, and then as we go down to make it a seamless prototype, we're gonna select whichever one we have here. Example, this is the first, so we'll make the first one selected. So change it, click into the first one and change it from default to selected and rename the variant within the group of radio buttons first. So let's keep going and do that. So the second one will be the second type. Now double click into the second item within here, change that to selected. Third will be third, double click into the third item, selected, oh, and this last one got chopped off a little bit, pull this down so you can reveal it. And the fourth one will be the fourth. Select the fourth and make it selected. So now within here, we wanna set up the prototype so that you can seamlessly click through each of them within Figma click prototype and now all we need to do is select the first of all of these ones and make it go to the variant that you're selecting. So as an example, select the first item here. We're gonna skip the one that it's going to. So this is the first one. So we're gonna skip this one and then we're gonna come down to the second one here. Hold shift as you're making your selection so you can select multiple things at once. So as I'm holding shift, I'm clicking and I'm clicking here and I'm clicking on the last one. And now when you hover over, a prototype little symbol will appear. And as you drag, you can see that it will drag all from the ones you have selected. And now we wanna make all of these items go to this first selected one here. So as we just prototype that really quickly, just so I can show you what we've done so far, as we come across, I've just dropped it into my frame click present and you can see within here that now when I hover you get the hover interaction that we set up before and then when I click the first one it changes to the selected variant. So now we just need to repeat the process and go through and change the rest of them. So now we'll set up the second one, skip this one as this is the second one, click prototype and drag it to the second one, the third one, and now the fourth one. Select the fourth. I'm holding shift as I'm doing all these selections. Make sure you're holding shift so that you can multi-select items. 
drag your prototype noodle down to your last variant as the fourth one. And all of these interactions should be the same. They should all be trigger is on click, action is changed to the one you have selected, animation is smart animate, and just set it to whatever you want. I'm setting the duration as 350 and the curve is ease out. Now, same as before, make a copy, copy, paste here, and now you drag your group of radio buttons into whatever you wanted to prototype. So I'm dragging mine across, I have a basic form here that I'm putting them into, selecting the form, and I'm clicking present. And now within here, you can see that I have the default state where nothing has been selected. And then as I go down, I hover, you can see the different hover interaction that we set up before. And now whichever one I select, I can change between. So if you have something you want to prototype with users about with a group of radio buttons, now you know how to easily set that up and use this within your prototypes. Thanks so much for watching. YouTube reckons you'll like this video, so go give that one a watch.